Hi, I'm Frederick from the techno label Detroit Berlin and today we're going to take a look at the stereo multimode filter from Duffer, the A121S. It's sent to me by Alex Fier from Germany, which is the distributor for Duffer. And sadly I can't keep this module, I have to send it back. I wish I could keep the module because I think it's a really 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 sweet and really creamy filter. This will be a pretty unbiased demo. I will say some good and maybe a few less good things about it. But I think overall it's a really nice filter. It's a 121 filter. There are a few already from Duffer, but this one is a stereo multimode. It's a stereo filter with different CV inputs. It's stereo, so it's actually two filters in one. And yeah, it has multiple modes. Hence the name multimode filter. So you have a low pass, a notch, a high pass and a band pass. And you can actually crossfade between all those modes. So that's really useful. It does have plenty of knobs. I count nine pretty big ones and four small ones. So yeah, that's quite a few. It has 10 inputs and two outputs. Those inputs, they are audio and CV inputs. It has the switch and with the switch you can actually connect those two filters so that the type 1, the knob to control the type of filter 1, will also control the type of filter 2. So let's quickly go over this patch. I'm using the Matriarch as a sound source using the four oscillators and the noise source. It goes into the stereo multimode filter from Duffer. Input 1 is normal to input 2, so with only a mono signal you can create a stereo signal, which is in my opinion really nice. Then it goes to the outputs. You got two outputs, a left and a right one, that goes into the oscilloscope. Then it will go to the mini stereo mixer by Duffer. I really like that mixer because it's pretty small, it's a stereo mixer, so you can pan all the signals coming in to stereo outputs. After the mini stereo mixer from Duffer, it goes through the spring reverb, two of them for the stereo image, and then it goes back into the matriarch to just put an analog delay on it, and then to the main output. So that is the routing of the audio signal. Then I have all those CV in and they're controlled by the analog and trigger sequencer from Duffer. So I have some animation going on. I'm also using the quantized stored random voltages for outputs of those going into the control CV inputs of the stereo multimode filter to yeah, give it some more animation and I'm 
giving a little bit of resonance that will sometimes peak. I'm playing with the frequency knob. There's a lot going on. Let's go over the knobs first. You have the frequency knob. It's the big vintage looking knob. You have some wiggle space to turn the knob. So it's not really uh, spacious, but spacious enough for people with thin fingers to actually control it pretty well. Then you've got actually kind of these are two knobs to control the left and the right. The other knobs are kind of controlling both. So let's first go over the type knob. This goes from low pass to notch to high pass to band pass and you fade it in between. Same goes for the knob on the right. If you have this switch in the off position, they control each side of the filter. If you have it in the on position, this knob will be linked to that one. When this is in high pass mode, this knob is bypassed and the right filter is also in high pass mode. Then you got the SFM one. It's the knob that controls the frequency for the left filter. It does have a voltage going in that is normalized to the knob so that when you turn the knob you go to plus 5, you turn the knob down you go to minus 5, so in negative, and when you put this control voltage in the SFM1 input, the normalization is broken and the control voltage is attenuated by this knob in the negative way, so it will be negative or in the positive way. So this controls the filter of the left channel and the filter of the right channel is controlled with the SFM2 knob. Here you got the common frequency modulation and that controls both left and right. So with the control voltage going in, you control both filters at the same time, which I think is pretty useful. Then we go to the lower row. The simplest one to explain is the Q and that's actually just the resonance. So when you turn it up, you add resonance. This is a delta frequency knob. It's also kind of a common knob but configured in a way that if you turn it you get a sense that the filters are shifting because one filter is opening up, the other one is closing. So if you turn it you kind of get a little bit of panning feeling. In a sense that if you turn it counterclockwise, like to the left, you have a brighter signal on the right and vice versa, which I would probably have turned around so that it feels more natural. So when you kind of pan to the right, the signal gets brighter at the right side, which gives an impression of, yeah, moving the signal to the right. Of course, this is if we're in low pass mode. I haven't tested it in high pass mode yet, but in low pass mode it gives like a little bit the impression that the signal moves to when, yeah, in the opposite direction of where the knob is pointing. And then you've got the Delta FM knob and that's actually kind of an offset so you can yeah, control and attenuate a control voltage going in that modulates the delta frequency. Then you got both level 1 and level 2 knobs. Then you got a QM slash TM1 and a QM slash TM2 knob. They can be configured by jumpers on the back. So you got two CV inputs which also have a steady voltage normalized going into these CV ins. 
which means if you, without something plugged in, you turn a knob, you're actually adding a steady control voltage. They can be configured by jumpers on the back and what it actually means is that these two inputs, they control the resonance for the left and the resonance for the right filter. They can also be configured that they control the type of the first and the second filter. So you can have the type of the left and the right controlled by control voltages and they can also be set up by jumpers on the back that the first one, the QM slash TM1 CV input will control the Q of both left and right filters and the QM slash TM2 will control both the filter types. Then you got from the left to the right the input, input 1 normalized to input 2 so that when you put a mono signal in the in one it is normalized to the second one and you have both filters working and sending out the sound to the output or you just plug one oscillator into input one one oscillator into input two and you got a true stereo signal then you got both outputs one from the left filter one from the right filter then you got the delta frequency CV in, then you got also the delta FM CV in, control voltage normalized to the SFM1 input and it's also normalized to the SFM2 input, then you also got the common frequency modulation 1 and that's also normalized to the common frequency modulation 2 it is a module that is very easy to put a few control voltages in and they are normalized to the second filter and this normalization is broken when you add yeah, the control voltage. I think it's a really com pretty compact module that features yeah, two really nice filters. The sound of the filter, I think it's creamy and it keeps in low pass mode, like the really low, low bass, it still keeps it when you add some resonance. It's the filter from the Dark Energy 2 and that's a pretty popular module from Dover and I think it really sounds good. I would say maybe let's compare it to the filter that's in the Matriarch. It's also a stereo filter, it has multiple modes, it has its strengths but it also has its weaknesses and where I feel that the filter from Moog has few weaknesses, especially when you add some resonance. I think that the stereo multimode filter, the A121S from Duffer, it wins when it comes to low frequencies when you turn the resonance up because it keeps those nice warm round frequencies and with the Moog ladder filter you lose them. They're not too different but different enough to be interesting to have them both. First, let's set up a patch. I think really nice sounding. Let's maybe put on an arpeggio or record, let's see. Okay, let's see how this plays out.
maybe give it some resonance. Now control the common frequency modulation with the CV out from the matriarch. I think this really sounds pretty, really sounds full-bodied, creamy, warm, round. I think it's really nice filter. Let's go up. And maybe let's move. Really musical. Let's give it some more resonance. Maybe try different. Filters like a high pass and a low pass. Really beautiful. Let's go back. Really nice. Let's connect the matriarch and set up something similar so we can actually compare it to the filter from Duffer. And I think they compare really well and they have their own really unique differences. Let's turn 
the level from stereo multi-mode filter down. Let's turn up the patch. So we got something similar. I'm going to use it So one side is the Dofer one, the left one and the right one is the Moke one. And they sound pretty similar. But let's turn the cue down from the Dofer one. Let's add some resonance. And you can immediately feel how they start to sound different. The Moak one is peaking earlier, so let's tone that down. I think that Duffer one has more controls. I don't think that. It's just a fact, so yeah, can't say anything else, but yeah, the Duffer one has more controls. They have their uniquenesses. I really like the Moak one. It's also inside of the Matriarch, so I use it plenty of the times, but I really like my Duffer filters, all of them. This stereo multi-mode filter, it's not mine, I really do like it, so hopefully one day I can have one of my own. Definitely being added to my want list. For the low end, this is a really nice, pretty filter. Let's continue to compare these two filters. This zaps a little bit more, maybe. It kind of reminds me of the Josh Wink Don't Laugh. Little bit. Yeah, little bit. <laughs> it's like laughing, laughing voices really far away. So, let's compare this how The Duffer filter would actually, let's see, give it You directly hear this bottom end that is so much more prominent with the filter And it can, it can be a good thing and it can be a little bit a bad thing. You have more frequencies. I think there is a situation for... I think both filters have their moments that they can shine in tracks, in productions, in live performances. If you have need for those tiny brittle um, sounds, you can achieve many of them with the stereo multimode filter from Duffer. I think it's just a brilliant filter. It was not on my radar before the distributor Alex Fia or Alex4, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a German company, so I would say Alex Fia. Um, before they 
contacted me to send me this filter to yeah just make a video uh, they have nothing to say about what I will say in this video so I like the filter but for the same part I might not have liked it I'm a little bit sad I need to send it back because I'm kind of fond of it in the few weeks that I have been playing around with the filter it's a filter that takes a little bit of time to really get into because there are many controls, many controls do kind of the same things but in a different way and you it, it's best that if you start using this filter you start by defaulting the patch with the type 2 filter the link in the off position so that they are totally separate that when you turn this knob actually something happens because when they're linked you can turn a knob as much as you want if this is in low pass mode and you put this one on band pass they will both still be on low pass so put it in the off position I would say that is the default mode you can put the type wherever you want but low pass is I think the most common filter out there then the SFM1 you can turn them both the 1 and the 2 all the way up that means that yeah you kind of turn the filter open so maybe not just start at zero when you start adding control voltages then turn it up because then they become attenuators the common frequency modulation it's in the middle it controls both so yeah it's also positive and negative so you can put the control in the negative by turning it counterclockwise when you turn it clockwise it will go to the positive attenuation then you got the deltas delta fm and the delta frequency they kind of play with the stereo image because I think they um, output the difference which is actually I think yeah just when you turn it one way it sends a positive signal to one of the filters and a negative to the other one and when you turn it counterclockwise this is inversed I think that's the most logical explanation but I don't know if it's actually what is happening but I figure out that will be something pretty similar to what I just explained then you got the resonance turn it all the way down so all these knobs put it in the 12 o'clock position except for the filter types you can do it then they're high pass filters this knob yeah it's the frequency I don't think that needs any explanation the levels I put them at 50% but you can play with it you can turn them really hot then you got the QM TM1 and the QM TM2 I would start with turning them all the way down and yeah if you know the module a bit better try to see what they actually do and also before mounting the module see how the jumpers are configured and yeah compare that to the manual because I didn't do that I was not too sure if there were jumpers so yeah I was a little bit excited I put them in my system and I start playing I start also scratching my head because it's not too self-explanatory so a good tutorial a good demo I think is needed for the stereo multi-mode filter so you can have this demo and also yeah take a look at the manual for what all those functions mean yeah you got plenty CVNs so I would say maybe this concludes the episode are there things that I would have done um, I'm going to be really honest <laughs> like all this review has been pretty honest I would really have liked if the filter was bigger but there is a huge 
part of the modular community that wants things tiny and there is a part of the modular community that wants things as big as possible. Um, it's a Eurorack format, therefore it is small, it's well laid out and I don't think that the knobs, I mean everything is accessible and if your fingers are average to tiny it, it's really not a problem at all. I really like that the inputs and outputs are all at the bottom. That means that the controls are really accessible. I prefer it to modules where you get a row of knobs and a row of in and outputs because then if you put modules next to that yeah, you will have less room and the wires will be everywhere. So I really like this. My personal taste and yeah, I think this self-made big knob, as I call it, it's actually an attenuator from the for that's behind the panel. I adjusted it a little bit. So I have a really big knob to control other voltages. I just like the feel of having something that is a little more substantial than everything cramped in a tight space. It's not too cramped, but still I think it's a balance between what does it cost in the system to have this space. I think the modules that are a bit bigger in my opinion, they have a little bit more value because in order to put them in your system, you need to sacrifice some space. With my system, it's not really a problem because it's stupidly big. Like those filters from like STG Sound Labs, they're really spacious, they're really big. You have just three knobs on a panel that is wider than the stereo multimode filter from Duffer. You just got three knobs and a few in and outputs and I personally really like that. The feeling of having space, of having a really big potentiometer, I think that's nice. But I also know that a big part of the Eurorack community, they like things that are really tiny and they can put many modules in their system uh, and then probably complain that they don't have enough uh, sockets on their bus board. That's another story. But I think having a little bit of space is nice. I think this is probably the best solution in between. It's not too cramped. They use smaller knobs to... yeah, they're okay. I must say Duffer, their potentiometers, they have a really rigid and nice feeling. They don't wiggle, they're really sturdy, so it feels really nice. Um, yeah, go buy this module, go buy it yesterday, do not buy it tomorrow, you should already have bought it. And I already should have bought it also, but it will be something on my wish list that is becoming pretty full. So yeah, I would say give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Maybe you can also join my Patreon to support me because I'm not getting paid for doing these reviews uh, or these demos. I am receiving those modules, but I also need to send them back. So yeah. I think it's really great to have the possibility to do this review. I would really like to thank you for watching. Again, I would like to thank Alex Fear for sending me this module up to the next one, I would say, and see you soon.